Okay, so in this lesson we're going to uh, discuss how to solve linear equations. And the steps we're going to use for the most part will be these. So here are the steps to solving our linear equations in one variable. So step one is we're going to simplify both sides of the equation if possible. And one way to do that is if it has any parentheses, we're going to clear the parentheses using distributive property. We can combine like terms whenever possible. And if fractions exist, most of the time it is easier to clear the fractions by multiplying both sides by the least common denominator. And uh, step two is to use the addition or subtraction property of equality to collect the variable terms on one side of the equation. And then again, use the addition or subtraction property of equality to collect the constant terms on the other side of the equation. And then step four is to use a multiplication or division property of equality to make the coefficient of the variable term equal to one. And then the last step is to check your answer. Okay, so let's look at the first one. So we're gonna go through these, these steps with the first example. So here's number one. So number one, we have three x plus 9 is equal to negative 18. All right, so you want to do this algebraically. So for the most part, there's really, it's really difficult to, to uh, intuitively determine what the answer is without doing this algebraically. And so in the previous lessons, you talked about all these properties of equality, the addition property, the subtraction property, the multiplication property of equality, and the division property of equality, and you talked about writing equivalent equations. And so that's what we're going to do here. So in number one, notice that, that step number one, there's, there's uh, no way to simplify both sides of the equation. So we cannot combine like terms on either side. There's no parentheses, there's no fractions, and so on. So we're going to go to step two. So step two is where, where it, step two and three is where we're going to bring all the variables to one side, all the constants to the other side using the addition and subtraction property of equality. So it's very simple to do. All right, so notice that that on this equation, the variable term only appears on one side. So that's the easiest kind. The easiest kind is to have an equation where, where the variable term is on one side. So all we need to do is bring the constant to the other side and then get x by itself. So this is like two steps, okay? So, based on what we talked about before, to get the variable term by itself, right now I'm adding 9 using the subtraction property of equality. I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. And then combine like terms. So notice I use the subtraction property of equality. Subtraction property of equality. And I'm going to abbreviate whenever possible. And uh, then we're going to combine like terms. All right, and so when I combine like terms, I get 9 and negative 9 is 0. That's what you wanted. And so I get 3x plus 0 is 3x equal a negative 18 plus 9 is a negative 27. A negative 18 plus a negative 9, rather, is a negative 27. So that's where I'm at, OK? Now, the next step, remember in previous lessons, to get the variable x by itself, right now I'm multiplying by 3. The opposite is to divide by 3. Let me go ahead and just rewrite this over. And so when I divide by 3, remember just 3. Don't do 3x. If you do 3x, that's mathematically incorrect. So, so 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 times x is x. And so x equals a negative 27 divided by 3 is a negative 9. Okay? And you're not always going to have time to check. So, so oh, and by the way, that's that, that div dividing by 3, I've forgot to mention this, but that was step four. So step four is to use a multiplication division property of equality to get the coefficient of, of the variable term to be one. And so that's what we did. So right here, I use the division property of equality. All right, and so, and so let's go ahead and check. Uh, that's step five. You're not gonna have time to check. Most of the time on a, um, on a, a timed test, a timed assignment, um, but to check, remember, just go back to the original problem. Always go back to the original equation, where we see the variable x, substitute negative 9. So we get 3 times negative 9 plus 9, and I want to see if that's going to equal to a negative 18. Order of operations, I multiply before I add. 
3 times negative 9 is a negative 27. And negative 27 plus 9, use your calculator, a negative 27, negative 27 plus 9 plus 9 equals negative 18. And that's what you wanted. Okay? All right. So number two is the same kind of problem. It's the same problem, number two. So we'll just do another one like this. So 3y minus 2 equals 10. So notice the variable term is by itself. I'm sorry, the variable term only appears on one side. So using the uh, properties of equality, right now I'm subtracting 2. The opposite is to add 2. Remember what you do to one side, you do to the other. And you have to show this. You have to show plus 2, plus 2. Now, combining like terms, I'm going to um, uh, add these. A negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 3y plus 0 is 3y equal. 10 plus 2 is 12. And then using the uh, division property of equality, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Right now, I'm multiplying y by 3. The coefficient is 3. So I'm going to divide both sides by that coefficient. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 times y is y. So y equals 4. Okay, and you can quickly check um, if you uh, need to. So 3 times 4 minus 2, and you want to see that's equal to 10, the original equation. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 minus 2 is equal to 10. All right, so that's number 2. Okay, let's look at number 3. Okay, number 3, we have, we have this for number 3. We have negative 2x plus 7 equals 11. All right, so again, the variable term only appears on one side. That's the easy kind. Right now, I'm adding 7 to that term. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 7 from both sides. So using the subtraction property of equality, combining like terms, negative 2x plus 0 is negative 2x equal 11 minus 7 is 4. All right, then to get x by itself, the coefficient of x is negative 2. So I'm going to use the division property of equality. Divide both sides by that coefficient. Now that coefficient is negative 2, so you've got to divide by negative 2. If you divide by 2, you've got to be careful. If you divide by 2, this is not 1 anymore. That's negative 1, so you do have to be careful. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. 1 times x is x. And then 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. Okay, so there's your solution. All right, in number four, we have this in number four. Now, number four has a fraction in it, but the way I'm going to do that one, okay, so here's number four, 7 eighths y minus 6 equals 8. So the way I'm going to do that one, if you do recall in this step, if fractions exist, clear the fraction, multiply on both sides by the least common denominator. Now, when I went over that, I said if fraction exists, uh, uh, depending on how it looks, um, you, you may want to do this differently than multiplying both sides by the LCD. And the reason I'm saying that is, is this, this equation, the, the fraction occurs in the variable term. There's only one fraction that you see. Um, so, so it's so much easier to add 6 to both sides first, and watch how simple this is, and then it's going to now look, what we're about to do will now look like a previous lesson you studied. So we have 7 eighths y, this is 0, equals 8 plus 6 is 14. Okay? And then remember um, in the previous lesson, to get y by itself, we're going to divide both sides by 7 eighths. So use the division proper of equality. And you may recall now, watch, 7 eighths divided by 7 eighths is 1. 1 times y is y. And remember this right here? You have a fraction divided by a fraction, so you're going to take that fraction, 14 divided by 1, multiplied by the reciprocal of the fraction that's in the denominator. The reciprocal of 7 eighths is 8 sevenths. You, we can reduce here, so reduce whenever possible. 7 divided by 7 is 1. Seven, uh, 14 divided by 7 is 2. 2 times 8 is 16, so you get 16. All right. Now let's go ahead and check this. I just want to check it since there's a fraction there just to show you how to do that. So you have 7 eighths times 16, right? And then minus 6, and you want to see if that's going to equal 8. Well, 8 into 8 is 1. 8 into 16 is 2. 7 times 2 is 14. 
and 14 minus 6 is indeed equal to 8. Okay? All right, so that's number 4. All right, let's look at number 5. So in number 5, we have this, number 5. Okay, so this time, let me just write it out first. Um, all right. Now notice this time we have uh, we have the variable terms on both sides, and we have constants on both sides. So so we have variable terms on both sides. So step number one, we still cannot simplify both sides of the equation because notice that there are uh, no parentheses, um, there are no like terms on either side. Those two terms are not like terms. Those two terms are not like terms. So we're going to go directly to step two and step three next. Step two and step three is where you use the addition or subtraction property of equality. So step two is, is so when solving a linear equation, these are linear equations. Remember the x to the first, x to the first. When solving linear equations and you have variable terms on both sides, you bring all the variable terms to one side, all the constants to the other. So step two says, says um, bring the variable terms to one side first. Now you don't have to, you could do step three before step two, does not matter, just letting you know. Okay, so I'm gonna bring the variable terms to the um, left-hand side. So see, this is two x right here, right? So, so you gotta think, is adding or subtracting two x gonna make this a zero when I combine them? So I'm hoping you see that, that um, uh, subtracting 2x is what you want to do here because 2x minus 2x is 0. But what I do here, I do here. And notice I'm aligning my like terms. Align your like terms. It helps. Align your like terms. Now we're going to combine like terms. 3x minus 2x is x. I get x plus 5 equal 0 plus 1 is 1. So that's where I'm at. And then finally get x by itself. And that's it. See, this one's easy because the coefficient of x here is already 1. We're gonna, right now I'm adding five, so I'm gonna use the subtraction property of equality again. So I used it here, and I used it here. So notice, notice I use the subtraction, subtraction property of equality twice, here and here, okay? All right, then combining like terms, um, this is zero. So x is equal to a one and a negative five is a negative four. All right, so that's my solution. Let's go ahead and check this one just to show you how to do that. So let's check. So when I check, wherever you see the variable x in the original problem, I'm going to substitute negative 4. So I get 3 times negative 4 plus 5, and I want to see that's going to equal 2 times negative 4 plus 1. All right, so let's simplify each side. Remember, multiply before you add. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12 plus 5, and negative 12 plus 5 is a negative 7, right? Negative 2, I'm sorry, 2 times negative 4 is a negative 8, and negative 8 plus 1 is also a negative 7, so those are equal. All right, so that's number 5. Okay, number 6. Number 6, um, we have 7x minus 3 equals 3x minus 15. So same thing, we have variable terms on both sides, constants on both sides. So let's, let's uh, uh, bring the variable terms first, and then we'll bring the constant terms next. So let's go ahead and bring the variable terms to the left-hand side. And when I do that, um, again, you need to notice that, that you're going to have to subtract 3x here, because 3x minus 3x is 0, and that's what you want there. Put what I do to one side, I do to the other. And notice I'm aligning my like terms. 7x minus 3x, combine like terms, 7x minus 3x is 4x, so I get 4x minus 3, bring that down, equal, this is 0, and 0 and a negative 15 is a negative 15, so that's where I'm at. So now this right here looks like what you did in, in numbers um, 1 and 2, right? And so it becomes very easy now. So um, I... Uh, um, Isolate the variable term first, so I need to get rid of the subtract 3. The opposite of subtracting 3 is to add 3 to both sides. What you do to one side, you do to the other, and you have to show that. Combining like terms, um, I get 4x plus 0 is 4x equal a negative 15 plus 3 is a negative 12. All right, And then using the division property of equality, divide both sides by 4. 
4 divided by 4 is 1, so my solution x is going to equal, my solution for x, or my solution for this equation, will be when x is negative 4. And that's your answer there. That's your solution. Okay, so remember, this is your solution. All right, so that's number 6. All right, let's look at number 7. So number 7, we have this for number 7. We have... 4x plus 6 minus 7x plus 9 equal 18. Okay, so now we have a situation where we can and do step one. We can simplify both sides of the equation because, because I can actually combine like terms first. So you see right here on the left side, the left side, 4x and a negative 7x are like terms. 6 and 9 are constants. I can combine those. Those are like terms. So we're going to do that first. So the first step here was to combine like terms. That's what we first do, combine like terms. And so 4x subtract 7x. All right, you got to think. 4 subtract 7. 4x subtract 7x is going to be a negative 3x, right? All right, so that's negative 3x. 6 and 9, so in your mind you're, you're saying what's 6 plus 9? 6 plus 9 is, um, what's that, uh, 15? Okay, so plus 15 equal 18. So that's where I'm at. So negative 3x plus 15 equal 18. And so now that, that looks like 1 and 2, doesn't it? That looks like this now, 1 and 2. So, so uh, we're going to isolate the the variable terms, I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides, just like this, combine like terms, make sure what you do to one side, you do to the other, you have to show that. When I combine like terms, this is zero, because 15 and its opposite, 15 and negative 15 are opposites, when you add opposites, you get zero. So I get negative 3x equal 18 minus 15 is 3. All right, so to get x by itself, you're going to divide both sides by that coefficient. So the opposite of multiplying by negative 3 is to divide by negative 3. Notice negative 3 negative 3. So negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. 1 times x is x. And 3 divided by negative 3 is a negative 1. All right. And let's go ahead and check this one. I just want to show you how to check this one. So we're checking x equal negative 1. So you go back to the original problem. And wherever you see the variable x, you substitute negative 1. All right. So we get 4 times negative 1 plus 6 minus 7 times negative 1 plus 9. And I want to see that's equal to 18. All right, so I ever saw the variable x, so you see it twice, right? So you're going to substitute negative 1. Okay, we're going to do multiplication first. Uh, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So negative 4 plus 6. A negative 7 times a negative 1 is a positive 7. And then plus 9. All right, and I want to see if that's going to equal um, 18. Okay, let's add and subtract from left to right. So negative 4 plus 6 is 2. So 2 plus 7 plus 9. 2 plus 7 is 9. 9 plus 9 is indeed 18. Okay? All right, so that's number 7. Okay, let's look at number 8. Now let me go ahead and use a nice sheet of paper for number 8. So number 8, we have this. Um, here's number 8. So we have... Um, Let's see, 7x minus 2 plus x plus 8 equal 2x minus 5 plus x. All right, so that's what I have. Okay, so um, in this case, I can, I can do step one again, combine like terms. I don't see any parentheses. I don't see any fractions. So, but I, I do notice that I can combine like terms. In fact, I can combine like terms on both sides this time. So on this side, I know I can combine the variable terms, those are like terms, and I know I can combine the constants. So 7x plus x, 7x plus x is 8x. Make sure you know that. A negative 2 plus 8, a negative 2 plus 8 is going to be 6. So that's plus 6, so 8x plus 6. So this right here, this left side simplifies to 8x plus 6. On the other side, uh, the only like terms are 2x and x. So 2x plus x is 3x. You get 3x minus 5. Okay? All right. So now I have variable terms on both sides, constants on both sides. So let's bring the variables to the left. 
So we're going to use the subtraction property of equality, just like that, which you uh, do to one side, you do to the other. 8x minus 3x is 5x. I get 5x plus 6 equal, this is 0, negative 5. And then next step, almost done. Next step is to subtract 6 from both sides, just like that. Combine like terms, negative 6 and 6 is 0. So you get 5x equal a negative 5, and a negative 6 is a negative 11. And then finally, to get x by itself, you can divide both sides by 5. And so f5 divided by 5 is 1. 1 times x is x, so you get x to be negative 11 fifths. All right, and so there's your solution. So the solution is negative 11 um, fifths, okay? All right, now let me just quickly show you how to do this. And then we're going to use a calculator to check just to show you what to do. So we're going to check x equal negative 11 fifths. Since, since there, there are a lot of terms here and you have fractions, I don't want to take up the time to uh, check this by hand. So we can use a calculator. So we have 7 times negative 11 fifths minus 2 plus a negative 11 fifths plus 8. And I want to see if that's going to equal. I don't have enough room here, so I'm going to do this. 2 times negative 11 fifths, negative 11 fifths minus 5 plus negative 11 fifths. All right. So on your calculator, be careful. How you, uh, be careful. You just um, just make sure you just write what you see, right? So watch. So 7, 7 times in parentheses, uh, parentheses, negative 11 divided by 5, close the parentheses. See that so far? It looks just like this. Then minus 2, subtract 2. All right. Then plus a negative 11 divided by 5, just like that. All right. Oops. Divide. Divide by 5. Okay. And then plus 8, and that's the left side. So let's press equal, press equal, and we get negative 11.6. So this side right here is negative 11.6. Hopefully this side is negative 11.6 as well. So let's check. So I'm going to clear. So this time would be 2 times. So 2 times, in parentheses, negative 11 divided by 5. Close the parentheses, right? Minus 5 plus negative 11 divided by 5 equals negative 11.6, all right? So, so um, that, that's the way I would do that on the calculator. I would do that on the calculator to check. Okay, so that was number 8. Let's look at number 9. So in number 9, we have a decimal this time, 9.2y um, minus 4.3 equals 50.9. Okay, don't make that difficult. You, we dealt with decimals in a previous lesson where you had decimals. You can do the same thing we've been doing. So we're going to isolate the variable term by itself. And so I'm going to, right now I'm subtracting 4.3. The opposite is to add 4.3 or 4 and 3 tenths to both sides, just like this. Okay, combining like terms, this is 0. So I get 9.2y equal. And then use your calculator if you have to. 50.9 plus 4.3, uh, 50.9 plus 4.3 equals 55.2. And then finally get x by itself. Right now I'm multiplying by 9, uh, I'm sorry, to get y by itself. I'm multiplying by the 9.2, so the opposite is divide by 9.2. Make sure it's just 9.2, the coefficient. Don't say 9.2y. That's not correct. And then reduce the 9.2's divide out, so you get y equals, and then use your calculator, 55.2 divided by 9.2 equals 6. Okay? So that's it. So that's, that's your solution. That's your solution. So, so um, basically you found the number that will make this equation a true statement. So this is a true statement when y is 6. All right? Number 10. Okay, so number 10... Let's do another uh, example with a decimal. Um, so this is number 10. Okay, so number 10, we have 21 point x plus 4.6 equals 10.9x plus 35.2. Okay? All right, so... 
So um, let's go ahead and bring, and, and notice I cannot combine any, any terms on either side. None, none of these are, are alike. These two terms are not alike. These two terms are not alike. So I'm going to use the addition and subtraction property of equality to bring the variables one side, constants to the other. So let's bring the variables to the left. So I get, so I'm going to subtract 10.9x uh, uh, from both sides. Notice I'm aligning my like terms. All right. And that's supposed to be 21.1x, sorry. 21.1x right here, 21.1x. So 21.1x. So 21.1x minus 10.9x. Let's say 21.1 minus 10.9. So that gives us 10.2. So 10.2x plus 4.6 equal, this is 0, 35.2. The next step, Remember, you're trying to get this term by itself, the, the variable term by itself. So now, right now I'm adding 4.6. The opposite is subtract 4.6 from both sides. Just like that, what you do one side, you do the other. So that's the subtraction property of equality. Combine like terms. This is 0. I get 10.2x equal. And then 35.2 subtract 4.6 equals 30.6. And then finally, dividing both sides by 10.2, just like this. 10.2 is divide out. You get 1 times x is x equal. And then the solution the, for that equation is 3. So this equation is a true statement when x is 3. So your solution, the, the, the only value of x that makes this equation true is 3. So that's your solution. Um, Let's go ahead and look at number 10, uh, number 11 rather. So here's number 11. We have negative 2.7x plus 0 0.4 equals 2.8 minus 1.2x. All right, so, so uh, it's just like the previous problem. Um, you, you cannot do step one. Remember, step one was, was to simplify both sides of the, of, of the equation. Uh, cannot do that here. But we can go ahead and bring the variables one side, constants to the other. So let's bring the variables to the left. So right now I'm subtracting. Here's a variable term. I'm subtracting 1.2x. So you got to know. You have to see this. You have to ask yourself, what do I need to do to this term to get that term to the other side? So is it subtracting 1.2x or adding 1.2x? I'm hoping you realize you're going to be adding 1.2x because a negative 1.2x and a positive 1.2x is 0. But what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Okay, And notice align your like terms. Now before you bring the constant to the other side, combine like terms first. Do it one step at a time. So uh, use your calculator because those signs are different. So on your calculator, be careful. You got to say negative 2.7, negative 2.7, all right, just like this, plus this coefficient, which is 1.2, like that, equal negative 1.5. So negative 2.7x plus 1.2x is negative 1.5x, all right, plus 0 0.4 equal 2.8. And now the, you have two steps left and you're done. So isolate this term. Right now I'm adding 0 0.4. So you're going to subtract 0 0.4 from both sides. Combine like terms. I get negative 1.5x is equal to, and then 2.4, I'm sorry, 2.8 minus 0 0.4 is 2.4. And then you get x by itself. The coefficient is negative 1.5. So you're going to divide both sides by negative 1.5, just like this negative 1.5, what you do one side makes you do to the other. Negative 1.5 divided by negative 1.5 is 1. 1 times x is x. Equal, using your calculator, remember positive divided by negative is a negative, so you know that's going to be a negative uh, answer. So 2.4 divided by 1.5 equals 1.6, will be a negative 1.6. Right, so that was, that was that one. Now, if you want to check if you want to check this one, you go back to the original problem. So negative 2.7 times x, which we're saying is negative 1.6, plus 0 0.4. And you want to see that's going to equal 2.8 minus 1.2 times negative 1.6. All right. 
So I already saw the variable x, I only saw it twice. So notice I'm substituting negative 1.6 twice. Using your calculator, uh, multiply first. Um, a negative times a negative is a positive, right? So 2.7 times 1.6 is 4.32 plus 0 0.4 equal 2.8. A negative times a negative is a positive, so be a plus here. 1.2 times 1.6 is 1.92. Adding these together, 4.32 plus 0 0.4 is 4.72. Adding these together, 2.8 plus 1.92 is 4.72. All right, and so those are equal. So, so that, that's your solution. So that's the, that's the value of x that will make this equation a true statement. All right, let's number 12. Okay, number 12, we're going to look at, at a fraction, number 12. So we have x divided by 3 minus x divided by 5 equals 2. Okay, now you see where, where you have... Uh, two fractions, you see that, and they're different denominators. What you may want to do first, and that's where this comes in, this right here. If fraction exists, clear the fraction by multiplying both sides by the least common denominator. So I'm going to show you how simple that is. So notice my two denominators here, my two fractions, the denominators are 3 and 5. So the least common denominator is 15. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. So what you're going to do now is this. I wrote this over. So what you're going to do now is this. So multiply both sides by the least common denominator. Because what you do to one side, you do to the other. So we're using the multiplication property of equality. So notice this has two fractions in it, so two terms. So put that in parentheses. So I say times 15, times 15. Okay? Then we have parentheses. See parentheses? So we're going to use the distributive property to clear those parentheses. So if we uh, distribute distribute right here, I get 15 times x divided by 3 minus 15 times x divided by 5. So 15 times this, 15 times this, equals, and then 2 times 15 is 30. Reducing, 3 to 3 is 1, 3 to 15 is 5, 5 times x is 5x, minus um, 5 into 5 is 1, 5 into 15 is 3, and this is 3x, equal 30. Notice that these are like terms here, so I can combine those. 5x minus 3x is 2x, so 2x equals 30. And then I can get x by itself by using the division property of equality. And so I get x to be 15. Okay? So, so that's, that's uh, how you can use um, this part here. Fractions exist. Clear the fraction. Multiply on both sides by the least common denominator. So let's do one more like that just to show you what to do. It's not difficult. Not difficult at all, but at all when you have fraction, you use that approach. So here's 13. You have n divided by 10 equals 9 minus n divided by 5. All right. So notice in this particular case, you have again you have two fractions, and there are um, in this case they're on different sides of 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 um, the equation. Now, technically, you can consider 9 as a fraction as well, right? Because you can write 9 as 9 over 1. But, but just think of this as an integer and just look at, when finding the least common denominator, look at these two denominators here. Because um, that, that's, that's a 1 right there. Um, so the least common denominator is 10. So what you're going to do is that since, since this has two terms on that side, you can put that in parentheses. So you have, I'm going to leave some space. I'm going to rewrite this over. I'm going to leave some space. 9 minus n divided by 5. So you can put that in parentheses, you're going to multiply that by 10, and you can multiply this by 10. So what you do to one side, you do to the other. And then the 10s divide out, and so 1 times n is n equal. Use the distributive property, you get 10 times 9 is 90, right? Minus 10 times n divided by 5. 10 times n divided by 5. And then reducing this, 5 into 5 is 1, uh, 5 into 10 is 2, I get n equals 90 minus, and that's 2n. And then almost done, two steps, so we're going to bring the variables to one side, so, you get, uh, so you're going to add 2n to both sides, n 
plus 2n is 3n equal, this is 0, 90. And then dividing both sides by 3, the 3's divide out, so you get n to be 90 divided by 3 is 30. And so that's your solution. So that's that's the value of x, uh, value of n, that will make this equation a true statement. Now you can check it if you want to check. You, you, wherever you see the variable n, you substitute 30. So you get 30 over 10 equals, and you want to see that's equal to 9 minus 30 divided by 5, right? Well, 30 divided by 10 is 3, so that's this side. Over here, I get 9 minus, and then 30 divided by 5 is 6, and 9 minus 6 is 3, so they are equal. All right, so that, and, and we're gonna, um, in the next lesson, we're going to look at some more examples. Now, in those examples, we're going to look at more uh, problems with parentheses. So that's going to be the next next problem. So notice that that in in most of these problems there were no parentheses, but the next set of problems will. Okay. So in in this lesson um, we learned how to solve, and these were kind of simple linear equations, so they weren't difficult at all. Um, so that's it. So that's the end of this lesson.